what is it gonna take for me to be a success with this? You're not consistent. You're not consistent. What's up, YouTube? Hopefully all of you are having an amazing day. Hopefully it's gonna get better and better, especially after you're done watching this video because I am here to help you. I'm an online health and fitness coach that helps hundreds of people lose hundreds of pounds and you are gonna be the next. I'm feeling skinny, Tony. Maybe not my client, but maybe you're just gonna watch the YouTube and you're gonna subscribe and you're gonna like because that's what we're supposed to do, right? And I'm here to help, that's what I'm here for. My name is Coach Chris and I help people lose weight and I'm gonna help you today because you are sitting on the other side of this computer screen thinking to yourself, man, what is it gonna take for me to be a success with this? How am I gonna lose this weight? I've been trying so damn hard for so damn long and I I'm sick of dieting. I just need to lose this little bit of belly fat. I can't get the mom bod gone. I can't get the dad bod gone. I got these things underneath my arms right here and I don't know what they are, but they jiggle like hell. And you're trying to get rid of it. That's why I'm here. I'm the guy that you need to watch. I got the answers, okay? How do I know I got the answers? Because I got hundreds of clients that have been success stories that have been just like you saying, I've tried it all and it is not working for me and I'm gonna need some additional help. And that's when we call in the backup, the cleanup crew. Coach Chris, that's me, all right? So today, I'm gonna be answering what I think are the six top reasons that you, Betty, Nancy, Gina, Allie, Tina, Trisha, Eric, Michael, whoever you are on the other side of the screen, are not losing weight. The top six, okay? I was gonna do five and I was like, I can't do that to the people. Gotta give them six. And these are the six things that you can probably change about your diet, your lifestyle, your way of doing things that is going to immediately have an impact on your plateau. Everyone in the world, I'm plateauing. No, you're not freaking plateauing, right? <laughs> I'll tell you when you're plateauing and it is not now. That's for damn sure. You're doing something wrong and it's not your fault. You just don't know what's wrong. Get on the scale, son. All right. Get off the scale. How are you supposed to fix something if you don't know what's wrong? We're gonna get it figured out, all right? Here we go. I'm gonna start with number six, okay? And I'm gonna start with number six. These are kind of in order, like not maybe not completely in order, but they're kind of in order from like my probably least to best reason that you're not losing the weight, okay? So, and just because I say least doesn't mean it's like not a crazy, crazy big deal but most of the time people make it a bigger deal than it actually is, so it's part of the problem, but it's not the full problem. Number six in the lineup of why you may not be losing the weight that you wanna lose, and I'm gonna lump a few in here because someone's gonna get offended if I don't include their category of thing that they want me to mention, right? <laughs> so this is probably gonna be the most popular, or the most thought of reason why you might not be losing, but to me, it's probably of the top six, so it's still up there, okay? It's probably least likely the reason. I'm gonna throw it in there. I'm gonna say it's a medical condition. It's a plateau. Maybe the fact that you're already freaking skinny and you don't need to lose weight. <laughs> I mean, that's reality too, right? You're already freaking thin. Don't do it. You don't need to diet. Maybe you need to put on muscle because you want to get toned, but you don't need to diet, right? Then in return, they get to be a lot thinner than I am. Uh, are you out of your mind? Maybe something like uh, hypothyroidism. Maybe something like PCOS. These things can potentially put you in a worse spot, for sure. You can be slowed down, but I think people put too much of an emphasis on this because I have plenty of clients that are still kicking butt, taking names, losing weight. It may be a slower process, okay? but it's not impossible. So for those of you that have number six going on in your life, PCOS, Hashimoto's, you may be on a special diet that is still gonna be conducive to good weight loss. And all of the dietary principles, the fundamentals still hold true to you as well. Caloric deficit, balance of nutrients, macronutrients to be specific, carbs, fats, and proteins. Get your vitamins and your minerals in, right? But if you have Hashimoto's, if you have PCOS, PCOS, if you have um, some sort of, I mean, the most common probably is underactive thyroid, right? That's what everyone thinks at least, right? Or PCOS, pretty common. Well, maybe you need to take your carbs down, but you don't need to go carb list. You don't need to go keto. No, maybe you just have fewer carbs, okay? Maybe you just lower your calories a little bit more because they weren't low enough, all right? But if you have these things going on, then maybe it's going to be a slower process. That doesn't mean that it's impossible, okay? So don't 
hold your hat on that being the reason that you are going to stay 250 pounds forever because i'm telling you right now if you're 250 pounds and you're five foot three you are absolutely capable of losing weight and it may be harder because you may not know the tips and the tricks which is exactly the reason why you should follow me on this youtube page because i'm going to give them to you okay but you have to have faith in yourself if you go with the easy out i can't because x you're forever going to hinder your progress because you're leaning on the words I can't and you need to not do that. That is freaking terrible, okay? Number five is that you're not consistent. You're not consistent. You think you're dieting so freaking hard. You've been putting your all into it this entire week. You had freaking pizza and donuts and Nancy's birthday and she had a red velvet cake and you passed all of that up all week long. Oh my gosh, I'm doing so good on my diet. And then the weekend comes around and you're like, hey, margaritas, I did so good. No. You can't do that. There goes that whole week of temptation that you just bypassed. You might as well have ate the freaking cookies in the break room. Why would you do that? You tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it didn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> it really didn't matter though. You had margaritas, you got a little bit tipsy, then you decided to eat some of the stuff that wasn't on the plan, the stuff that you passed up in the office. You think you're dieting so freaking hard, but the reality is you're dieting so hard until you're not dieting anymore. You're trying so hard and you're putting yourself under so much pressure to do good throughout the week, but then you cave on the weekend and everything goes to waste. I'm sorry to tell you, but you need consistency on another level. You need to step up. You need to eat on your plan for a full month because your entire life you got to eat exactly what you wanted to eat. Okay, let's make a three month sacrifice, okay? I ate 30 years worth of food the way I wanted to eat it. This time around, I'm going three months on a plan. Easier said than done, I know, but it's the reality, okay? You've done your thing for so long. Do something different. Stay a little more disciplined. You're gonna find that it's not that hard. You're gonna forget about the sweets when you don't have them and you're gonna enjoy the progress, okay? You're gonna be super happy with yourself very content with what's going on and you're going to want some more because you're going to get the weight loss bug that's what's going to happen and you have crazy energy and you're super super proud because your confidence is boosted and everyone in the office is saying oh my gosh i'm not going to eat the red velvet cake because gina over there has lost 20 pounds and the only thing she's done is skipped out on the red velvet cake you're going to get a lot of praise for it and that should be your motivation you guys accomplish something big number four I'm gonna put two things in here, okay? Cause they kind of go hand in hand. You're not sleeping well and you're stressing too much. Now I'm putting sleep and stress together because sleep or lack of sleep causes stress. Not the stress like, oh my gosh, I need to do all this stuff, right? But actual stress, like internal stress, like your body isn't recovering. What the heck am I gonna do? I'm not recovering. This sucks, I'm super stressed not good what happens when you stress out cortisol the stress hormone increases causes insulin to increase when you have an overproduction and increase in insulin it drives blood glucose into a cell where it's not utilized because you don't need the insulin or you don't need the glucose to fuel you through some sort of activity because you're not being active, you're just stressed and then it's stored as fat, okay? Because it's not getting used. You don't need to be stressed. You need to sleep, you need to recover. Your body needs time to adapt to this new process that you have going on and it's gonna make everything better. It's gonna make everything easier. You're gonna have more enjoyment. You're gonna be able to focus. You're gonna be able to meal prep because you're more organized. You're gonna meal prep and then you're not gonna have to cave on the junk food. You're not gonna accidentally pull over and in an out burger and get a double double because you forgot your chicken this is all it all feeds off of each other it really does so get your sleep in and stop stressing so much how do you stop stressing so much by planning your day so that you're checking all the boxes because if you're checking the boxes there is no stress stress is your call to action when something is off nothing is going to be off if you plan successfully and follow through with your plan because Following through with your plan is where you find fulfillment in life. Eating too little, number three, or drinking too little, number three. What the heck do I mean by that? If I don't eat, doesn't that mean I'm gonna lose weight? Well, yeah, it does. You're gonna turn into a popsicle stick. I've told you that before. But if you're eating too little, you're also slowing your metabolism to a point where it's not really gonna budge any further. Think about eating too little like this. 
you have a t-shirt factory. Your t-shirt factory makes 2,000 t-shirts per day. All of a sudden, a law is passed where no one has to wear t-shirts. Now you only have 500 orders per day. What's gonna happen? You're gonna have to have people go on vacation or get fired. Same thing with your metabolism. If you're supposed to eat 2000 calories a day to be happy and content, and you go down to 500 calories per day, your metabolism is going on vacation or getting fired. You need to keep your metabolism up and have the right amount of food and incrementally lower so your body understands the standard of what's going on. Fewer calories, maybe more cardio, but keep the food high, right? That's why you can't just simply restrict food. You gotta add some cardio in there to put yourself in a deficit without lacking the nutrients that your body needs to actually function properly and burn those calories and utilize that energy, right? So maybe you're eating too little or maybe you're drinking too little. What do I mean by that? Your body needs water present to help burn the fats. You need water present to shuttle the nutrients. You need water present to recover, right? Right. So if you're not drinking the water, what's happening? You're depriving your body of the nutrients that it desperately needs to successfully operate. Also, on a more logical, practical sense, if you're not drinking, then you have more room in your stomach for food. What happens if you drink a liter of water with the food that you eat for that meal? You're not gonna be that hungry. Your stomach is a balloon animal. It is about to pop because you got a crap ton of water and you got a little bit of food and you're full. But if you don't drink water, guess what you can fit more of in that belly of yours? Food. Drink water with your food. It will help you fill up. I promise you that. Really good practice right there to do that, okay? Number two, if you're not tracking your food, if you're not tracking what you eat, right? Do you have a food scale? Do you use the MyFitnessPal app? These are all important things. Like how do you know how many calories you have going into your body? Are you using a measuring cup? Or are you just rolling the dice? I'm super hungry right now, I need to eat. Four ounces of chicken. That's like the size of a volleyball, isn't it? Like your, your eyes are gonna be doing some stuff, right? And your stomach is gonna be doing some stuff and they're gonna communicate and be like, bro, more hungry over here. Give me a little tennis ball size. I ain't gonna be happy, right? And then you up it to the volleyball size. Why? Because you didn't measure it out. You need to measure the food. You need to know what the portions look like. If you're not measuring your food, how do you know exactly what you're eating? You don't, you don't know. So follow my channel because I'm gonna be making a video here on how to use a food scale and that is gonna be an excellent starting point for you. Like the best, okay? So we'll get into that later. But if you're not tracking what you're eating, you're going to overeat. Another thing, how, keep a food diary, like very simple. Every time you grab something and eat it, boom, write it down, what I eat, boom. Oh, I didn't realize I had five handfuls of peanuts today throughout the day. Habitually eating because you don't know. You're not paying attention. Oh man, I didn't realize I had 40 nuts. <laughs> like 40 almonds, that's so much fat. That's all the fat that you need for the day. You just ruined the day. Keeping track of your food, super, super important. Number one. The single most obvious probably reason that you are not losing the weight is that your diet sucks. You are on the wrong diet. You have the wrong calories. You're eating the wrong macros, carbs, fats, proteins. You are doing the wrong stuff. You're eating too much sugar. You're not having enough whole foods that are gonna fill your stomach up. You're not having enough low calorie dense foods that are gonna take up a lot of volume in your stomach and leave you full. You're eating a normal piece of bread instead of a necessarily delightful piece of bread. You're eating a 200 calorie tortilla instead of an Olay Extreme Wellness tortilla that's 60 calories. You're using regular mayonnaise instead of the light mayonnaise. You're using a regular barbecue sauce instead of the G Hughes barbecue sauce. Drinking a pop instead of drinking a zero pop, right? All of these things should be a part of your diet plan, be a part of your strategy. What else is conducive to a good diet that puts you in a caloric deficit that allows you to eat a lot of food, full of nutrients, full of vitamins, full of minerals, getting, making sure you have all your amino acids, all your proteins, healthy fats and your carbs and fiber so you can poop. What goes into that? A little bit of cardio on the side, a little bit of exercise to burn extra calories so you can have more food to make sure that you're balanced, right? To make sure that you get a little bit of everything. I believe in taking care of myself in a balanced diet and a rigorous exercise routine. So you need to get on a better diet. What's the best diet? A balanced diet, a lifestyle diet, a diet that doesn't actually have a name. It's not called diet. It's called a lifestyle, healthy way of eating whole foods, periodically not whole foods because you have sugar cravings. And I'd rather have you drink a Coke Zero than cave on your plan and then just go ham on some Reese's peanut butter cups for like two days. 
because you're like, oh, I'm so deprived. I can't have a single thing of sugar. Oh my gosh. No fruit. Ah, because there's sugar in fruit. Fructose. Oh my gosh. I'm freaking losing my mind. No. Eat the fruit. Way better than the Coke. Way better than the Starburst. There's no fruit in Starburst. Eat it. It's going to benefit you, okay? Your diet plan, in order to be successful with your diet plan, you have to have a strategy. I'm eating low calorie dense foods. I'm filling up on veggies. I have water with my meals so my stomach's full. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm losing weight. I have a little bit of fats, a little bit of carbs, a little bit of protein, a lot of bit of protein, more protein. Protein super satiating. It's going to keep you full for the longest period of time. Eat the protein. It has to happen. You have to have a strategy if you want this to work, okay? And if it's not working for you, it's pretty much a guarantee that your diet just sucks. How can you create a better diet for yourself? This is just gonna be an off the cuff suggestion that I'm coming up right now with. How do you do that? You go online to Mifflin St. Gior Calorie Calculator. You put in your information, you subtract 500 from whatever it says your maintenance calories are. Then maybe you walk on an incline for 20 minutes a day, three to four days a week to burn some extra calories. Then you take the calorie count that you had while you're on the treadmill doing your incline walk, and you say, hmm, how much of this needs to be protein? How much of this needs to be fat? How much of this needs to be carbs? Well, I'm gonna recommend for all of you that don't have any dietary restrictions due to your health, maybe you do 30% protein, 40% carbs, 30% fats, or even better. Maybe you do 35% protein, 35% carbs, 30% fats. Why? Because Coach Chris said so. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, this is a, this is a common range, right? Protein super satiating. Keep your protein high. Carbs give you energy. Keep your carbs high if you can or moderate. Fats are going to help with the hormonal balance, cognitive function, right? So keep those a little bit lower because they're super high in calories, but keep them in your diet still. Balance, people. Balance, okay? So if you want more information, just keep following my YouTube page. Like, subscribe, do the thing, the subscribe thing. Like, that's the greatest. Oh my gosh, I love you forever if you do that. And then we will continue on with this journey together because that's why I was put here on this freaking earth. That's my job. That's where I find fulfillment and satisfaction. And I would love for you guys to follow my YouTube journey with me. So subscribe and apply these freaking rules today because they're probably affecting you in a more of a way than you actually know. Food scale, food journal, sleep, water, better diet. How do you get a better diet? I just told you, but if you don't believe me there, just come see me at chrisizzo.com and I can help you out because I am an online health and fitness coach who can help you even if you live in Timbuktu, okay? Okay, perfect. Love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. It means the world to me. All right, adios.